Oh my goodness, friends, it's time for another fashion video because I actually have a vaguely aesthetically pleasing place to film these things now. <gasps> Shocking. So when we all picture vintage style, we usually think about the perfect, beautiful 1950s or 1910s dresses in the middle of the forest in the spring and the summer, or maybe that's just me. But anyway, that's what I pictured when I decided to make the switch to full vintage. Um, well, it was also spring slash summer at the time, so I didn't even think about like the other seasons that exist, like when it gets cold or when it gets rainy or cold and rainy. So then I had to figure out, huh, how do I stay warm? Especially because the colder that I get, the worse my disabilities get because then I get tense and shaky. That makes my joints scream for help and then I get migraines because I'm tensing and I just explode. And it's a whole moment. Also seasonal depression makes my body icky. So my first instinct was to walk around my home in full vintage with the addition of fuzzy pants. Um, but I was informed lovingly by my family that it did look like the Sydney equivalent of a hippo in a tutu because of the very out of place legs coming out from underneath a skirt, to which I agree. Um, and also I can't leave the house like that. So then I did some research and found some nice sensory friendly weather appropriate things. And now I can still look as amazingly annoyingly extra in any weather, which is really all a girl can dream. So today we are going to cover rain, snow, Arctic blast, and anything else in between. Really just rain and snow, I don't know why I wrote that. So let us begin with rain. So to begin with, I had a very hard time finding a solid, good vintage looking raincoat that I liked. So I would typically just pray that my umbrella would do its job, which, um, when you have wide skirts is very rarely the case, but then I found the most extra, the most fashionable, the clear raincoat that follows the 1950s silhouette. It's, it's an actual dream. I'll link it in the description. And then my umbrella is also my favorite thing because it has a big handle, which I can hold quite steady when I have zero grip strength, which is a lot. And it's really big and it folds inward when you close it so you don't get entirely soaked, just like partially. Overall, a dream. And then when it comes to rain boots, I know that vintage rain boots do exist. I have yet to find a pair that I actually like, so I usually just wear my regular heeled boots or one of my pairs of heels that covers most of my feet because I'm still like above the wet. Also, yes, I typically do wear heels every single day. It helps me to walk more carefully and with a better posture so that my hips and knees don't dislocate as much. Don't ask me why that's the case or if it's comfortable. This, it just happens. Now my favorite pair of boots to wear in the rain are these dudes, which I got on Amazon because Rachel Maxey recommended them and I fully agree with her decision, they're lovely. And then in regards to keeping my hair in its curls and fanciness and glory and whatnot, that's literally the only reason I use umbrellas. Like I never used them before I started curling my hair. And I will often use rainy days for updos or braids or other ways of not relying on my curls to stay perfect and then just go run in the rain anyway. However, sometimes I do set my hair the night before and then I want the curls to last their average of four days. So in that case, I do so much hairspray that it's crunchy um, and wait for it to fully dry before I venture out of doors. So that's rain. Now, snow. Um, we are going to begin this one with the boots. I really wanted to get vintage looking snow boots. I did a lot of research and tried to figure out what vintage snow boots looks like and then figure out how to get myself a pair. And I discovered that they haven't really changed a ton in design since like the 40s. So like my boots that I got from Eddie Bauer are quite similar to 1950 snow boots. So I just kept the boots that I had. And that was just stunning because good snow boots can be expensive. Um, and then when it comes to coats, I have this big, really heavy wool coat from Collective Clothing, which I absolutely adore. I call it my Christine Daae coat because the hood makes me look like Christine from Phantom of the Opera or Belle from Beauty and the Beast in Wintertime, whichever aesthetic you prefer reference you get better. But yes, it's super warm. The pockets are absolutely massive and I get compliments on it literally everywhere I go. Also the dog that I had last week really liked it. It's covered in dog fur now, so. Thanks, Velma. Also, this coat is conveniently about an inch or two shorter than the average vintage skirt so that you don't have that like awkward situation where you wear a really big coat, but then your skirt underneath is shorter. So then you just look like straight up naked underneath because it covers you too well and not the vibe. It doesn't do that. Now, if you want a less uh, massive jacket, I have my Anastasia coat, which is dubbed as such because look at it. It is also from Collective and it is quite warm. It fits very nicely into the aesthetic and I love it dearly. That was my favorite coat. And then for my birthday, I was given this gorgeous military suit from Heart My Closet London. And goodness, is this a sexy jacket. I love the pencil skirt at home because I don't really like the feel of pencil skirts and I'm working on it. Um, but this jacket, oh my goodness, this jacket. It's just as warm as the Anastasia coat. 
but it makes me feel like I can really kick some butt. Like Lady Commander vibes, I'm really here for it. I will link it in the description for you, don't you worry. So now that we have covered the outerwear and the footwear when it comes to keeping warm, what about literally anything else because there's also the inside of buildings. Um, to begin with, petticoats are actually a lot more insulated than you think they are because they are uh, mostly air. So they keep you kind of cool in the summer and then warm in the winter, which is an absolute plus and also why you will almost never see me wearing pants or any type of clothing without a petticoat because I just love them. Also, swooshy things make me sensory happy and I really, really enjoy that. Why are my hands? I'm just holding them like this. So anyway, the best way to stay warm in vintage winter is layers, layers, layers. I have to wear a boring back brace. Sorry, let me rephrase that. This gorgeous and sexy corset. Um, and I wear that every day to help me not dislocate things as much. Um, and it actually really insulates my core, so that's a bonus. And sometimes in the summer it stays cool and sometimes it doesn't. It depends on its mood. Sometimes it's really, really, really hot and I'm dying in it, but you know, health before comfort or whatever they say, I guess. Um, but it does in the winter keep my torso pretty warm, which is great. And then for legs, I will either wear stockings or tights. I personally prefer stockings, um, but at the same time, they don't stay up ever. So they're typically my go-tos if I'm not walking anywhere or I'm like at home and just chilling. Tights, those took a long while for me to be sensory okay with, but now I really, really love them. And I typically get knitted tights from Kohl's because they're super soft and also warm. And also if you get annoyed having to pull your tights up all the time, I highly recommend wearing underskirt shorts with them. Um, I typically wear shorts under all my skirts all the time, despite my skirts being very long. Cause I mean, you really never know when you're gonna need to lay on the ground with a dog or just do the world's worst cartwheel in the middle of a field. You never know when that's gonna happen. So you gotta be prepared. And once I accidentally put on my tights over my shorts and I was too lazy to undo the whole thing. And that was when I discovered that the cotton of the shorts makes the tights actually stay up so you don't have to pull them up as much. It's beautiful. Also, white tights added to an outfit really make a vintage look pop. So when in doubt, that is always a good choice. You may feel a wee, wee bit like Alice in Wonderland or Anne of Green Gables, but without fail, it will look incredible. So. That is my first layer. And then we add the shirt, the petticoat, and the skirt. Also, if you want an extra layer on the bottom, wearing a dress with then a petticoat on top and then the skirt on top of that is also really great and I do that frequently. And typically that is enough to keep me pretty warm along with my coat or jacket when I'm outside, but then sometimes I will add a sweater as well. Most of my cutest vintage sweaters are not actually the warmest, but some of them are quite chunky and cozy and I adore them. Honestly, some of my warmest ones are from Old Navy. I don't really like fast fashion, but I've had them since like middle school. And then there's this one that I love that I got in Italy. So in conclusion, how to keep warm in the winter time and dry in the rain, it's not all that different from how we do it in modern fashion, but just like a little more extra. And when it comes to start dressing vintage, you'll realize that most of the guides that you find about it don't include all of the less than perfect Pinterest board level fashion ideas with weather. And so thus here they are in one place for you. If you want to learn more about how I dress, why I dress this way, etc., I have a sensory friendly vintage guide in the cart above, and I will link some of these things in the description for you as well, if I can find the links to them. And yes, that is pretty much all for today. It's a pretty short video because I needed a bit of a break from the in-depth research I've been doing for each one of these. They're getting longer in researching time. Um, but I do have a solid couple of info videos coming up, so get excited for that. And my outro doesn't really make sense contextually with this video. So I hope you have a lovely day and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.